Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are San Diego. How about his new home, and how happy is he to be a Padre? Seth Smith, the first ever in Petco Park history to homer in the first two games of the season. He's got a couple against the Dodgers. Oh, my. Yasiel Puig hit a monster two-run home run last night on the way to a 3-2 Dodger victory. And we're set to go for game three, their upper game of this three-game series, the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Diego Padres. On a cool evening, temperature could drop the wintry into the high 50s. Dick Kenberg with Mark Grant. Tyson Ross going against veteran Dan Heron. The Padres have not been able to take a series here at Petco against the Dodgers, and the last nine times they met, it's about due. And I think Bud Black feels very comfortable with Tyson Ross being on the mound tonight to try to take the series, win two out of three. He's got a tough lineup to face these Los Angeles Dodgers. He has had two games to scout in person. Look Look at the numbers in Oakland. Not impressive, but since with the Padres last year, the win-loss record, not a lot of support. But look at the ERA, 3.17. Speaking of ERA, if he's got that slider working and locating the fastball, a career ERA against these Dodgers, 1.80 in 15 innings. So Tyson Ross, good feel with him on the mound tonight to try to take the series from these Dodgers. Yeah, he needs some support. They gave him only 24 runs in 13 starts last year. Now the bullpen. How outstanding in the first two games of this season. It's a tradition the Padre bullpen. It most certainly is and when you talk about championships you talk about benches and bullpens well last night and in the series seven innings, two hits, no runs, six Ks. Yeah, they've got pitchers out there that come in and have the wipeout pitch. They make good quality pitches and let the defense work for them. That's what it's all about and the acquisition of Joaquin Benoit handing the ball over to Houston Street. Houston Street, we know what he's all about. Sealing the deal. Darren Balsey, the pitching coach for the Padres, and Bud Black smile ear to ear. If the starters can take him deep, hand the ball over to that bullpen, I like the Padres' chances. Seven innings, no runs, only two hits from the San Diego Padre bullpen. Well, Chris Button is standing by. Mutual Admiration Society, Seth Smith, former teammate with Houston Street when they played for the Oakland A's. Let's hear what the ace reliever of the Padres has to say about what he saw when he faced Seth Smith.
brought to you by Saquon Casino, proud sponsor of Padres Opening Week. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. By Buick, visit your local Buick dealer or go to Buick.com. And by Southwest Airlines, find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. If there is one guy on this team who knows just how strong it is to have Seth Smith on your roster, it's Houston Street. The two were teammates in Denver from 2009 to 2011. Here's Street on sharing the uniform again with his old teammate. Seth is just Mr. Consistent. Um, I think he is, he's underestimated as a player. I think he is. I've seen him go on hot streaks and carry a team when we were in Colorado. Uh, He's a great clubhouse guy. He knows his routine. He's very confident, naturally. Just doesn't need much reassurance. Can Seth Smith make it three games in a row? And can the Padres lock up the series against their NL West rivals? We will find out tonight. First pitch is coming up next on Fox Sports San Diego. We're set to go on a brisk evening. Tyson Ross has completed his warm-ups on his way into the dugout, getting the good well wishes of the bullpen crew as they cross paths in the outfield. The Dodgers are 3-1 and one in the early season, winning those two games in Australia against the Arizona Diamondbacks and able to win 3-2 last night as the Padres left the bases loaded in the ninth inning. Padres won the opener of their season on Sunday night three to one and it's all about taking series we talked about that in the pregame show we talked about it in the open and what a good feeling it would be as the Padres travel tomorrow to win two out of three of the Los Angeles Dodgers I'd say that's a pretty darn good start for the opening week and the Dodgers a team that has either taken or tied nine straight series here at Petco Park seven zero oh, and two are the Los Angeles Dodgers Padres uh, just having trouble scoring against this tough pitching staff of Don Mattingly. The uh, Dodger pitchers in the last 10 games have not allowed 
more than three runs to the Padres. Three runs or less in 10 straight games. Hey, they're tough. The starters, one of the best rotations in all of baseball when Clayton Kershaw is healthy. And we saw some hard throwers out of the bullpen for the Dodgers. So, like we said about the Padres, the potential of them taking them deep. The Padres are good in that category, but the Dodgers, they're right up there as well. Nick Hundley will be behind the plate catching the offerings of Tyson Ross. Here are his thoughts about the big right-hander. The sky's the limit for Tyson. Um, I don't think anybody in the league wants to face him. His stuff uh, is, a, is sharp. Uh, it's not straight. Everything's moving. Everything's hard. And uh, his sliders might be the best in the game. So he gets as many swing and misses from a right-handed slider as anybody in the game. So when you have that kind of swing and miss stuff, it's uh, definitely uncomfortable at bat. And, in fact, Nick is right on. He, Tyson Ross led the league last year in swings and misses and was fourth in the National League overall with that great slider of his. Tough to make contact. We'll see how he does tonight in his debut here in 2014. Henry Ford, our senior vice president at Fox Sports San Diego. Hey, he's open in the market. <laughs> Let's hope that uh, it's an up market for the Padre hitters. <laughs> he forgot the earplugs. That's a tradition that goes back to Qualcomm days. So let's look at the Los Angeles Dodgers starting lineup tonight. Don Mattingly has them hitting this way with Crawford. Well, this is the same lineup all three games of the series. Puig with a two-run homer last night in the victory. Heinle Ramirez, former Padre Adrian Gonzalez. Andre Ethier, 231 Average last year against the Padres, who did a good job of shackling the left-handed center fielder. Juan Uribe, he's had a three-hit game here in this series. A.J. Ellis behind the plate. D. Gordon at second base had what proved to be the winning single against Ian Kennedy last night. And Dan Heron, a good-hitting pitcher on the mound. He has a 215 lifetime batting average. And for Tyson Ross, the scouting report is brought to you by Jaguar of San Diego. When he is down in the zone, he is excellent. And you probably see more change-ups tonight. He threw a lot more change-ups in spring training. He had some success. So you know what, Dick? We talked about the slider and the change-up. If that's on, watch out. A look at the Padres' defense behind him brought to you by Aramco Mortgage. In the outfield, it'll be Smith in left, Amarista in center, and Will Venable in right. Headley at third, Cabrera the shortstop. Jerko and Alonso will command the right side of the infield with Nick Conley behind the plate. Set to go. Left-handed hitting Carl Crawford, the left fielder, starts it, and he's had success against Ross. First pitch is inside ball one. Crawford four for six against Ross in their previous meetings. His numbers last year with the Dodgers, 116 games, was injured a good part of the season. Ross from Oakland, California, University of California, Berkeley. He was a second round pick of the Oakland A's in 2002 out of college. Two and one. And his younger brother Joe Ross is a promising right hander mm -hmm. built much like big brother Tyson in the Padres minor league system. And he falls behind 3 1. Free and easy motion for Tyson Ross trying to get that down with plan because. As tall as Tyson Ross is, Dick, you mentioned it's 6'5". He really doesn't have a long stride. That enables him to get up on top and work downhill like that. Line drive toward the alley in left center field, and that's going to be gloved by Seth Smith. But by the time he gets his throw in, a stand-up double for Carl Crawford. It was good fielding by Smith. If that ball gets through, Crawford might have had a triple. It certainly was. I mean, for an outfielder to split the gap like that and prevent that ball from going, helping out Tyson Ross. Let's take a look. Downward plane, just catching too much of the plate. Now, working behind as well doesn't help because pretty much Crawford's going to look for the fastball. But a good job by the athlete out there in center left field. And he is an athlete. All sports in high school. Football, basketball, baseball, soccer. He was great at checkers. <laughs> Yasiel Puig, you could say the same thing about him. Whatever sport he might have tried. He would have been a star, and he is a budding young star in baseball, and he's trying to butt his way on. It's going to be a tough play for Ross, and he pulls Alonzo off the bag with a throw. Puig is safe. In his haste to get Puig, 
He misfired. Good throw would have gotten Puig. You know, I was almost going to say as soon as he scored the bunt, thank you very much. I mean, yeah, Seal Puig can really. Oh, wow. I don't know that whether that's challenge worthy. It's early in the ball game. It appeared that the toes of Alonzo might have still been in contact when he gloved a tough call for first base umpire Sean Barber. Well, so they're going to call it an error, actually. Dave Roberts on the horn to find out if it is, in fact, challenge worthy. Apparently not. Although now uh, this will be part of the game played whenever a challenge situation uh, presents itself. You know, you'll stall to give your side as much time as uh, there is to be able to make a call. Is his toe still on the bag there? And Bud Black's going to challenge. Currently, it's ruled safe. An error charge to Ross. This is the part of the new rule in the replay that they're going to have to fine tune. You know, the, the, the crowd, and normally in a tough play, the crowd would know the umpire is being charged by a mad manager and they get into it. Here, it's a matter of, well, what are we going to do? What's this all about? And the fans are, are left out. They've got to find a way, whether it's throwing a flag or setting off a firecracker or whatever, so that the fans <laughs> know what's going on. Well, Field and Colbert is the crew chief, and it looks like he's doing most of the dialogue with the three other umpires. Now Don Mattingly wants to get into the act after the umpires make their decision on what they're going to do. The risk here for the manager in Black's case is if he's wrong, he loses mm -hmm. his one challenge. And we've already seen this year in the first week. By losing that first challenge, a play comes later where if they had had a challenge, it would have been overturned. You know, I'm wondering here if, in fact, Bud Black was asking for some help from the home plate umpire Jim Reynolds because he had a good view being from home plate down to first base, whether his foot was on the bag or not. That might be an instance that we're talking about right now. Ruling is that he's safe at first. Tough call. Here's another look. It's just. From this end, just tough to see whether or not his toe is still just kissing the bag mm -hmm. there. See, see how he's talking to home plate umpire Jim Reynolds. That, that's what I'm guessing. That because of his angle, that angle that we saw there, position yourself at home plate to see if you can see the foot on the bag or not. I'm wondering if he wanted to get his input on that particular play. So he's not going to challenge. It'll be safe at first, safe at third. A double and a throwing error by pitcher Tyson Ross and the Dodgers, who scored early last night on a single by Crawford and Puig's home run on their way to a tough 3 2 win. But they got that two run jump in the first, and they have a chance to score early tonight. So no challenge. Buddy Black still has an active challenge. Hanley Ramirez, the batter. Ramirez is off to a slow start this year. Wasn't last year. 345. 20 home runs this year. A 1 for 15 start in the first four games. Enfield will give up a run for a chance at a double play. By the way, Dick, setting off a firecracker, I think that's <laughs> great. Maybe a flare. Yeah, set off a little, a little red flare. So everyone knows. <laughs> One of those? Yeah. Something. I love it. Ring the bell out there. Get <laughs> Mr. Ford to <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> Need a ground ball here for a double play. And there's that slider we're talking about. You get ahead of the hitters, Tyson Ross, and you flip that slider on the outer half of the plate, they're going to have no chance. Here it is. Nick Humley's glove down and away. That's exactly where he throws it. A little bounce there, but Hanley Ramirez, no chance. You've got to keep your eye on that band at first base Puig with his speed. Although his stolen base rate was not good last year with all of his speed. 
he doesn't get a great break off the bag at first. And Dick, it's worth mentioning again because remember the rule came into play last year. Pitchers can no longer fake the third and throw to first. So if you go to third base, you have to throw it. And remember, Bud Black put that play on quite a bit with Chase Headley covering at third base. There he goes. And it's fouled at the plate. Wasted effort for Puig. So he was thrown out eight times in his 19 attempts last year. That will improve. And let's take a look at the keys of the game brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Hey, get an early lead. That'd be nice. Give Tyson Ross a little bit of wiggle room. And big pitch, big hit. That seems what the Padres need, especially last night. You know, making a big pitch to try to get out of an inning, or the Padres offensively a big hit to score a couple runs. A ball, two strikes. Ground ball by Headley. Fair ball into the corner. Easily scoring is Crawford, and here comes Puig ripping around third. He'll score on a double by Hanley Ramirez. He's no longer one for 15. Knocks in two in the first three men to hit against Ross tonight. That produced two runs. First RBIs of the new season for Hanley Ramirez. Let's take a look where the glove is. That's a slider. That, just, that It is a slider, in fact, but it just catches too much of the plate. He hooks that ball. Chase Headley playing off the line a little bit. Hey, why not go back to that pitch? But he just didn't get it out there enough. And Puig on his horse scoring with that speed of his, easily scoring with that speed. And the Dodgers, just like that, are up 2 nothing. Just as they were last night. Now it's up to Ross to try to check him right here. Adrian Gonzalez, 1 for 13 at the start of the year. Getting that early lead so often pays off. Gonzalez leading the Dodgers last year in home runs 22 and with his 100 RBIs. He's three for six against Ross Lifetime. And even when he doesn't take a full swing, the ball just jumps off his bat. Look at the distance that ball carried into the crowd. Easy swing ball jumping off the bat and all fields as we take a look at Ian Kennedy. Who last night went five innings gave up three earned runs. He only walked one. He struck out four Dodgers. But he gave up to start the game the single to Crawford and Puig's long home run and the Dodgers jumped up to nothing. Out of play. Dick I don't know if you remember a. For another first baseman left handed hitter by the name of John Olerud. Remember John sure. Olerud? Oh, sweet swing. Yeah, yeah, very sweet swing. And that's where I'm going. Adrian Gonzalez, a sweet swing. Tim Wallach, bench coach on the right to Don Manningly. But Olerud didn't have great bat speed. In fact, he had one of the slowest bat speeds. But he had such great hand eye coordination and he was so strong that the ball just jumped, kind of like Adrian. There's a ball up the middle. The shift was on. Normally, Cabrera would have been in position and scoring easily. Is Ramirez on an RBI single off the bat of Adrian Gonzalez? Four men have produced three first inning runs. This shift betrayed the Padres on that swing from Gonzalez. Yeah, you talk about beating the shift. Adrian Gonzalez did just that. He actually goes down and gets this ball. See, it's pretty much just all arms. He gets himself in a good position. He goes down the top half of the body, going down towards that outer part of the plate. Enabling himself to get the fat part of the bat on the ball and just a professional heater beating the shift big time. Had Cabrera been in what would be called a normal shortstop position for a left handed hitter, the ball would have been hit right to him, but that's the risk reward you take. And Gonzalez continues to pound Padre pitching, although 0 for 8 in the series. Lifetime. Well over 300. In fact, he has the leading batting average against San Diego pitching of any hitter in the National League. Well, any pitcher would love to get out of that first inning unscathed and throw about maybe, you know, fewer than 15 pitches. Well, 15 pitches so far for Tyson. And the Dodgers have to score three times. Still no one out here in the first. Andre Ethier, the hitter, double, error, double, single. And with uh, that base hit by Gonzalez, his lifetime average 
against San Diego pitchers 356. Tyson just hasn't found that field location way off once again falling behind 2 and 0. Oh. Went around 2 and 1. There's that slider we're talking about. Looks like a fastball. Ends up as a slider. Looks like a pump. Feels like a sneaker. Time now for the Southwest Airlines spray chart. Let's see what it shows. With Andre Ethier at the plate. He likes to pull the ball. Right field 59 hits last year. But you know what that tells me though. You know the 40 to center. You know he, he pretty much uses the whole field. Yeah. Right field dominant. Outfield shades yeah. him a little bit to left with the infield squared away. Right. Three and that's the first out of the inning. And Andre Ethier you are now free to move back to the dugout. After that nice pitch from Tyson Ross. Remember the slider that he checked the swing. He comes back two seam fastball. Nick Huntley frames it. Hey, that's close enough for me. Jim Reynolds rings him up. Juan Uribe, veteran third baseman, is off to a nice start. Seven for 17. Last year, solid contributor and uh, plays consistently well afield. He'll get you the big hit now and then. 50 runs batted in. Infield still looking for a double play to get Ross out of the first. With ease, 93 on is, that fastball. Is that unbelievable? He's just getting heated, heated up. You know, he can he can go north of 93. It's all about locating that fastball that we talk about all the time for any pitcher. Do you like to pitch? You're a native of cold weather. Loved it. Springs and uh, spring weather up in uh, Illinois. Do you it. like it? A night? Th this is our winter here. In the and, and you know, high fifties. Well, Dick, you know, when when we grew up, if it was cold, we played. If there was no snow, I don't care if it was 35 degrees, we played. And as a pitcher, you're always moving. You're the hottest guy out there. Right. Not only looking, but as far as physically as well. And I like to throw in on the hands. Guys don't like to swing that that bat when it's cold. You get in on the fists. You get him off the end of the bat, like down and away. Those hands will start buzzing. I had no problem pitching in the cold weather. Loved it. Of course, Tyson, a native of the Bay Area, so he has not had that kind of upbringing. Yeah. Just wonder with the, of the players of field blowing in their hands to keep those loose. That's off the hands, and it's Yurko will get the double play that way. Four three. Well played by Jerko as that number hit right to him. The runner Gonzalez couldn't elude the tag and a quick throw by Jerko completes the 4-3 double play. But the Dodgers ring up a three.
with three hits and an error, three runs scored. Here's the Padres lineup. It'll try to make the comeback here in the bottom of the first. Brought to you by Toyota. Everett Cabrera will lead it off with Seth Smith. Home runs in the first two games of the season. Chase Headley bats third. Yonder Alonso in the cleanup spot. Then Jed Jerko, Will Venable. Venable has uh, only one hit in his career against Heron, but a home run. Alexi Amarista will be in center field, hit seventh. Nick Huntley will bat eighth, and Tyson Ross ninth. Well, Dan Heron, he's a good one. He's got great command. When he is on, he can dice the plate with the best of them. You got to get the ball up and maybe get something early. And because if you get, if he gets ahead of you, he could drop that good split figure fastball of his for the strikeout. Cabrera, one for six at the start. 27 year old from Nicaragua. Nicaraguan athlete of the year twice. Good numbers last year before the suspension. One and one. Now Heron's had some trouble uh, in the spring and had a bad outing against the Angels. Gave up uh, six runs in two innings. F falling behind and getting the ball up. That's the report that I got on Heron. He's been one of those. Give him the ball. He, he'll give you innings. He throws a fastball, a cutter, that split we talked about, and a curveball. Since 2005, Heron, now 33, has started 297 games. He Leads the majors tied with Bronson Arroyo. Soft ground ball to short. Hanley Ramirez takes care of the first out here in the bottom of the first. That'll bring up Seth Smith. Well, no one here at Petco has homered in each of the first two games of the season until Seth Smith this year. What a great looking swing and a taking advantage of a mistake. Against Zach Greinke last night, the first hit given up by the Dodger right-hander, and that cut the Dodger lead to 3-1, and eventually Los Angeles on to victory 3-2. You know, I think Houston Street said it best during the pregame show when he gave his opinion about Seth Smith. He's he said he was. Underutilized, under—I don't want to take put words in Houston's mouth, but underrated, so to speak, because there has been times when he has carried a ball club. Acquired primarily by Josh Burns, the Padre general manager, to strengthen the lineup against right-handed pitching. It was a weakness for the Padres last year. So far, so good. Two and one. Well, to center field, but high enough that it'll come down into the glove of Ethier. Two away. Here's the defense for the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight with Crawford in left, Ethier in center, Quig the right fielder, Uribe and Gonzalez at the corners of the infield with Ramirez and Gordon up the middle, AJ Ellis behind the plate. Two outs to Chase Headley, the third baseman. First pitch split to Chase Headley. One thing about Heron throughout his career, he throws strikes. He won't get many free passes. One and one. He does give up the long ball. Three time All Star. Said one heck of a career. Soft fly ball, Hanley Ramirez at shortstop. And an easy one, two, three inning for Dan Heron after one here at Petco. The visitors late 3 0.
fans and our Dodger fans here tonight at Petco uh, bringing along the jackets and warm weather gear. A.J. Ellis against Tyson Ross to lead off the second then D Gordon and the pitcher Heron. Ellis two for 12 on the young season. And hit 238 last year with 10 home runs. Good defensive catcher. Dick, you know it's tough for a starting pitcher like Tyson Ross. Is the first inning that he had. And then the offense comes in, bang, bang, bang. Once you three, you got to get right back out there after that workload of throwing 20 plus pitches. He needs a quick inning here. You got Ethier to strike out and the rebate to bang into a double play after the first four Dodgers reached safely and three runs scored. Slider just misses. Good pitch. Had a chat with Darren Balsley, the pitching coach of the Padres before the game, and He's talking about Tyson Ross and his slider. And he said, you know what? He throws it out of his hand almost like a curveball. And what I mean by that is there's a traditional slider grip and release, but Tyson is a little bit different because sometimes it might act like a really hard curveball. That's on the outside corner, strike three. Ellis caught looking. Second strikeout for Tyson Ross. That was a nice two seam fastball on the outside part of the play. But what I'm talking about, the traditional slider, remember I talked about it right about the side this way. But Tyson holds his like a curveball almost and throws it so hard that it gets that type of break. It's almost like a curveball rotation, but because he throws it so hard, it gets that slider break. So, did you nice. throw a slider? I threw a slider later in my career. Oh. I did. Was not too successful at it, but I threw it. Is it tougher on the arm? I think it is. Yes, absolutely. Tough on the elbow if you don't throw it correctly. D. Gordon slotted eighth in the lineup by Don Mattingly, but has produced a couple of RBIs here in the first four games. He's four for ten. Excellent speed. Find a groove here, big right-hander, this inning, and get back in that dugout. Dodgers and the Padres an off day tomorrow for travel. The Dodgers go home, open their Dodger Stadium season against the rival Giants. Padres head to Miami for three Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then to Cleveland for three Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Three and one to Gordon. Ooh. And a walk. We've talked a lot about the slider from Tyson Ross tonight, and on the left is his grip. And he'll throw that to where it's almost scraping his knuckles on the catcher's mask. And on the right tonight, you see that slider down and in. Very tough to lay off. That was a pitch he was behind in the count. It was 2-0 to, to go 2-1. So it gives the illusion of a fastball. And the hitter can't catch up to it. And they already commit. But the key is for Tyson to get ahead. Nice looking grip right there. Aaron the pitcher a lifetime 215 hitter squared the bunt tipped his hand as Ross goes over to first base with one out and a three nothing lead we'll see if Mattingly has his pitcher sacrificing here runner goes taken all the way and an easy steal by Gordon Huntley not even an attempt to throw him out. You almost smelled that one coming, huh? Mm -hmm. Heron squaring around to bunt. You know, kind of block Nick Hundley. And then the start from Deke Gordon picking him up, putting him down, and the smart move by Nick Hundley, not even attempting. Throw that ball away, gets an extra 90 feet. Gordon with a running start on Ross's move. Now you can bunt him over, you can slash, you can do a lot of things. One and one. Aaron, three doubles last year. Remember the Washington Nationals? He's been around. So with one out, 
and the type of hitter Dan Heron is, Dick, who's a pretty good hitter, he's going to try to drive that run in. Sure. First drafted by St. Louis, and he pitched for Oakland three years, Arizona three, Angels three, Washington last year, and now his first game in a Dodger uniform. Nice block. Nick Humley's going to have to begin his game, right? If he's ahead in the count, Tyson Ross is going to have to anticipate that slider in the dirt. He knows the slider's coming. Okay, he recognizes it. Moves to his right. Fingertips down towards the ground. Cover up the wickets. The five hole right there, right? So it doesn't scoot between his legs. 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. That looked like a, either a changeup or a two seam fastball. Third strikeout for Tyson. Back to the top of the order and Carl Crawford. Let's take a look. That's a two seam fastball with tremendous movement down and in. We started that outside and it came all the way across, hit the inside corner. Crawford laced a double to left center to start the first inning and the three run go round. So he's now five for seven facing Tyson Ross. Third of the way toward third base had to put on the brakes is good stop by Hundley. That's why it's so important with that secondary lead for any base runner. You do not have to be fast as a base runner to be a good base runner, right? If you get a good secondary lead, you see daylight, you're off and running. Crawford doubled on a 3 1 pitch. He sits on a 2 0 delivery here. You know another thing Darren Balsey the pitching coach in Padres told me Tyson's the type of pitcher who never shakes. Whatever the catcher puts down he throws and his philosophy is this if the catcher feels. To put down a slider I should be able to execute that slider and be successful and have a good result. And you know what? it's a good way to develop a good cadence and, and rhythm as well. Second walk in the inning as Crawford joins Gordon and here comes Puig. And Darren Bosley out to the mound. Well, I'll tell you one thing: these pitchers know how to execute and make the pitches from the scouting reports and talking to the scouts and talking to Darren Bosley and, and seeing the video and seeing the spray charts. Tyson knows exactly what he wants to do here against Yasiel Puig. Puig trying to bunt his way on. Didn't beat out the bunt, but was safe on the air by Ross. So one of the three runs scored by Los Angeles in that first inning. Unruh. Look what he has done against the Padres, as opposed to the rest of the league. He's got six home runs just against the Padres in 15 games. 14 against all the other competition. He had a no doubter last night over 400 feet to left field. That had some sizzle on it. Yes, it did. 95. Peas at the knees. Aspirin tablets. Forty fourth pitch. He's not out of the second inning yet. That's a good setup pitch. Sure. Push him off the plate and then come back with that slider. He's the type of hitter who's going to dive to the outside part of the plate. Nothing wrong with that 93 mile an hour fastball in. Oh. 
just outside two and one. And Ramirez with a two run double is on deck. 45 pitches to record five outs for Tyson Ross up to this point. That's that's quite a workload. And as I mentioned earlier, not a lot of rest in between innings. Yeah, he shook off Hundley. Yeah, he did. You're right. And three and one. Ross, a little off the mark here, his command. And treading in the troubled waters. Three and one with two on via walks here in the second. You know, Quig is swinging if he likes this one. Mm -hmm. That had right center field written all over it, huh? Just working under it a little bit. The runners will get a jump start here. 3 2 coming up. Live fastball, 94. Gordon from second, Crawford from first on this delivery. Both men with excellent speed. Way outside, and the bases are loaded all on walks. Well, first and second with Queen up. We're going to go pitch by pitch. We know the damage he can do on one certain pitch, and that's a good sign getting ahead with the fastball down in the zone. There's the backup pitch. Now he's trying to work the outside, not missing by much, but still close isn't going to cut it. Tyson just hasn't fe felt that good tonight with the feel on that slider to put him away. And once again, Nick Hundley earning his money back there tonight. He's made three nice stops up from this point. 48 pitches, three walks to load him up, two outs, and here's Ramirez who doubled in two in the first inning. You know, I know it's early, but this could be the at bat of the game here between leaving it three nothing or the Dodgers adding on. Just to underline the importance of keeping the Dodgers at three. A reminder that the last 10 games, Padre hitters have not managed more than three runs in any game against Los Angeles. Keep them right there and hope that uh, Padres can play some catch up. It's like a relay team on the bases. All three of those men can really sprint. And Ross trying to keep them locked right there at the pillow. Don Roach, rookie right hander, yet to make an appearance in the big leagues. This could be the night. Ramirez down on the count, two strikes. He's got a good two seamer up into this point. In fact, I think he's got a better two seamer working right now than that slider. Here it is again. And even though he yanks that ball, it's down the heart of the plate. He wants it in. I'll tell you what, that that'll be a pitch that a lot of hitters will be falling off their shins. Plenty of room out there. Venable foul territory. Runners return. Well, that really had a slice to it, didn't it? Yeah. Rainbow out of play. I thought off the bat that that was going to be a routine uh, chance for Venable. Wind is blowing into the toward the right field corner. Long run for Will and doing the right thing, putting on the brakes and sliding pop-up slide to avoid going into that fence. Well, Gordon returns to third, Crawford to second, Puig at first. The 53rd pitch of the game coming up from Tyson Ross. One thing seems certain the Dodgers are going to get into the Padre bullpen early tonight. Yes. Trying to get him to nibble.
30 pitches this inning. That's a workout. Ground ball to Headley. He'll go the short way, and the inning comes to a close. Danger, danger avoided. The bases are left loaded. Dodgers lead by three. Special photographs when you come to the ball yard, and uh, we want you to tweet those photos using hashtag Padres fan photo. You'll have a chance for it to be shown on one of our telecasts. It's brought to you by AT&T. We'll begin showing those photos in the next homestand. I, I like that selfie you took of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I resemble myself, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yonder Alonzo leads off the second and fouls that one. Down the left field side, Alonzo, Jerko, and Venable to face Dan Heron here in the second. Got a lot of catching up to do. Start with a base hit, an extra base hit, a walk. 3 nothing Dodgers, but it feels worse. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, the Padre hitters know what they got to do against Heron. Phil Plants here, and uh, yeah. Alonzo Powell working diligently with the hitters. High fly ball aimed at Ethier back a couple of steps in center. Four up, four down for Dan Heron. Time now for our cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. Jed Jerko, only the fifth rookie in the last 17 years to lead his team in both home runs and RBIs with his effort last season. That's a cold hard fact for a cool customer. Jet Jerko. West Virginia cool. Jerko joining Trumbo. Jody Garrett who spent some time with the Padres. Albert Pujols and Preston Wilson. The five players in the last 17 years to lead their team as a rookie in home runs and RBIs. Boy, Heron just flips everything up there. Changing eye levels, changing speeds with the cut fastball, the split finger. That was a high split finger there, Carl, the strike. And Jerko goes down swinging. He's 0 for 7 on the season. So there's the company of rookies that made a big splash in. Their initial season in the major leagues by leading their team in home runs and RBIs. Jerko with his 23 homers and 63 runs batted in.
Trumbo with the Angels, Garrett at Cleveland, Pujols with the Cardinals. Whatever happened to him? And Preston Wilson with Florida. <laughs> Prince Albert, what a year for the Redbirds back then, huh? Mm -hmm. Here's Will Venable. Off to a decent start, three hits and seven advance. He's one for 13 lifetime against Heron, but as we mentioned earlier, that one was a long one, a home run. Two and two. Going off speed when he's behind in the count. That's confidence. Split finger fastball to even the count at two and two for Heron. Southern California native, high school of La Puente, college Pepperdine. And for the first time, uh, the Padres have worked Heron to a full count. And six five and two fifteen. Aaron 33. And he gets Venable to swing at a ball up out of the strike zone for his second strikeout. Six up, six down for Heron. Third, and I am in a great spot. If you want to see Tyson Ross's slider, this is the seat you need to see it. And Steve Ziff, the senior vice president of sales and service, tell us a little bit about what the experience is like here in the on deck club. The all new on deck suite at Petco Park is the closest seat in the house to all the action. You're five <laughs> feet from the manager, two feet from the yeah. players at the most premium experience we deliver at Petco Park. It's unbelievable. I really feel like I can just go out and touch the guys warming up at some guys coming in, bringing in some ice cream. The experience here, being able to be so close, you can all, talk about also being able to see inside the top. Oh, you can hear it all. I mean, you can hear Don Mattingly right now giving <laughs> advice to the guys on deck going up to a bat. You can hear the guys celebrating. I mean, it really is probably the most unique experience in sports. And we're just trying to deliver really unique and premium experiences for all of our business clientele and all of our corporate partners. Lastly, I think one of the cool things when you walk in is you're kind of in a tunnel and you really do feel like you're part of this little exclusive club down here. Oh, absolutely. So you get exclusive access to Lexus home play club you've got a personal concierge who waits on your hand and foot throughout the game it really is an incredible experience this is a better seat than i usually have i think i may stay down here guys all right thank you chris and steve you know the padres uh, just to tag on to uh, the commentary there and what great seats those are uh, they've added up the totals as andre ethier after gonzalez fly to center field is up he struck out the first time the padres 
average ticket, the average ticket to come to a game here is $16.37. That's the lowest in the major leagues. Wow. So you talk about bargain and enter entertainment right here at Petco Park. And premium tickets, and of course this is the ultimate premium. I don't even want to ask how much those tickets are, but you add up all the box seats, the, the best seats in any baseball stadium. The average in the major leagues is $93 a ticket. Wow. That's the average. Here at Petco, $41. Mm. So get your money's worth here and more as Ethier with a shift on just punches a single to left field for his first hit. Adrian Gonzalez beats the shift earlier. Andre Ethier answers back and says, I can one up you. Fourth Dodger base hit of the night with one out brings up Juan Uribe. I don't know whether he was fooled by that pitch a little bit. As we take a look, he's up in the box. No, he, he just kind of reaches for that ball. He commits and realizes it's up and away and just serves it that way on the line. It's almost a hit and run swing. Exactly. Just protecting the runner, just punch it to left field. Uribe grounded into a 4 3 double play in the first inning. I'd like to see Tyson Ross go to more of that two seam fastball. It's got tremendous movement on it. If he keeps it down around the knees or even maybe lower thigh area, let that ball work. He might get some swings and misses and some grounders like he needs right here. So everyone raving about the slider, but yeah. as Nick Hundley said, everything he throws has terrific yep. movement. There's a good slider and made might you know what Dick it might take one one slider to get that feel. And then Tyson might get locked in. And then the other case is like I mentioned if one of your better pitches isn't working that night you better find a way to go into your arsenal and make one of your other pitches be your go to to use your favorite word conundrum. You know it's it just happens all the time you, you warm up you got great stuff and you get on the mound you don't have anything other times. You can't throw anything with any uh, action in the bullpen. You come no. out and you, you throw a two-hit shutout. How do you figure that? Mine was the first example, by the way. <laughs> you were great in the bullpen. Oh, I threw a lot of no-hitters out there. One and one to a rebate. Jammed him. That's what happened on the double play ball in the first inning. Boy, that'll yeah. make those uh, fingernails shudder. I know he's like oh my gosh I can't believe that last pitch the run on it up and in fighting it off of all two strengths Heath here at first one out Boy, he's good taking some ugly hacks and the reaction of ball against bad is not very positive. Well, Tyson does throw a four seam fastball as well, and he'll throw that four seam down and away his glove side to the right handed hitter, like that last pitch there. His arm side, which is on the inside part of the plate to the hitter, he'll throw the two seamer to get either the ground ball or the swing over the top of that pitch. Runner goes. There's a hold at the plate. Now that was a two seamer there. Ethier back to first. Go back to that two seam fastball. The grip on the left, and then in action, you saw it here. First, two seam. See how that ball's going down and in? Tough to square that ball up, especially when it's on the inside part of the plate, and keep it fair if you do hit it. Popped up. Could be a play off first base. Alonso calls off Huntley. Go to second out. He got away with one there. That was a hanging slider, and that's a hanging slider that Juan Uribe likes. But just a little bit underneath it, working underneath it for the pop up. Catcher A.J. Ellis steps in. He struck out the first time, took a third strike. Three nothing Dodgers. We're in the top of the third, fans. A couple out. Heath here at first base. Fastball down the middle at 91. What a cool night, but a nice turnout on this Wednesday evening. 
push the three game series well over 100,000 fans. Runner goes. Hundley's throw. Not in time. Came in on one hop, and a quick tag by Jerko made that a tight call from second base umpire Fielden Culbreth. But the second steal of the night for the Dodgers. I think this is always a tough throw to handle if you're a shortstop or second baseman. Like you said, Dick, the bounce up, then you got to go back down. You got to go up to get it and then back down for the tag. And Ethier just gets in there, it looks like. Safely. His, his first steal of the season. And the count remains two strikes on Ellis. Remember earlier I mentioned about two seamers off the shin? Just there to Ellis, and here it is up and back down, kind of blocked by Jed's right leg. That was closer than it looked, wasn't it? It's a good job by Jerko to catch yeah. that one hopper and slap the tag. And Ether, who seemed to run out of gas on the slide, infield with the rain early this morning, even though they had the tarp on overnight, uh, a little slower than normal. Struck him out again. No runs to hit a man left in scoring position for the Dodgers middle of the third at Petco and uh, Padres need three to tie. And uh, come out to Petco Park to watch your Padres entertain the Detroit Tigers. Saturday, April 12th at 540, all fans in attendance are going to receive a free Padres long sleeve t-shirt presented by State Farm and supported by the mighty 1090. Don't wait, get your tickets today at Padres.com. Get on that horn, dial 619-795-5555. I'm a big fan of the long sleeve t-shirt. Big fan. And I grew up a big fan of the Bengals, the That's Detroit right. Tigers back in my youth in Michigan. And here for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday set a week from this weekend. And you'll get a chance to see the one hitter that many say is the best. Well, we heard it tonight. Mark Sweeney, the best hitter in the planet, Miguel Cabrera. Uh -huh. And a high octane offense from the Tigers. That ball driven deep to right field. If it would stay fair, it would be a home run, but it's foul. Amarista, he could put a yep. jolt in it now and then it around the batting cage uh, today. Uh, you hear the camera. Where does he get all that power? Oh, he's a spark plug. He's got some decent bat speed. And credit Sean Barber, the first base umpire. He hustled down that line to get a good angle of that baseball hit above the foul pole, indicating a foul ball. Good hustle by the first base umpire. Whoa, Aaron, way up and over. Out of the strike zone, the count two and two. Amrista, his first at bat of the new season. Huntley and Tyson Ross to follow. 
You see how Heron's trying to go in, out, up, down. Fastball, off speed. Keeping the hitters off balance. You see by the Fox tracks exactly that. In and out on the corners. Nothing in the sweet spot in the middle, up or down. Better take yourself a, a box of candles with you to Miami. A couple of dozen because Why is Amarista is going to be 25 this ah. weekend in Miami. I'll have to wish him a feliz cumpleaños. And have a couple of birthdays in this uh, next week. Yonder Alonso will be 27 next Tuesday. Look at those yahoos. <laughs> His friends trying to steal it from him. Roll to the right side and be close. Out. Boy, that the designer of this baseball diamond making that 90 feet creates some mighty interesting calls. How close was that? By Heron. Gonzalez had to make the play, and Heron continued when he knew he couldn't feel the ball to be in the right spot. And boy, that's close. That is close. And Bud Black's out to uh, a little more. I got safe. Yeah. I think Amaris's heel hit the bag before Heron hit the bag. Is that a voice from New York that I hear saying that he might be safe? An overrule? I think you're right. Is it worth the challenge? Apparently not. This is another part as we we go through this replay challenge system. Once the manager leaves the umpire, is that he can't change his mind? See, See the that's the, he's safe. That's the one I like. Where is there. he? No, they both heels. You know, Heron's heel was on there too. As Hundley drives it to left, but right at Crawford. That's eight up and eight down now for Dan Heron. Didn't quite square up that swing, Hundley. Here's Tyson Ross. Did you see the challenge last night with the Giants Diamondbacks? Bruce Bochy challenges a pickoff move to first. Said he was safe. He thought they were out. It stayed the same. Mm -hmm. He was safe. And then that same at bat, the hitter, wild pitch, cross up, plate the plate. Matt Kane clearly out. They called him safe. AJ Pollock. No challenge left. He had no already challenge spent left. <laughs> well, the managers are going to have to learn just how to exercise the rule. One and two now to Tyson Ross. Not a bad hitter, but of course uh, he's had to uh, adjust his hitting style after dislocating a shoulder with a swing against the Dodgers last year. Two and two. Efficient uh, eight outs in a row for Heron, needing only 37 pitches. Rebe on the short hop. Ooh, close at first. Dan Heron has been perfect through the first three innings, and the Dodgers lead by three.
He's got great hands. Uh, you saw what he did yesterday with the ball in the dirt uh, from both uh, Headley and Cabby. But his hands are good. He's got good feet around the bag. I think he has a, a, a chance in time to be thought very highly of a you know, very, very good defensive first baseman. Yeah, some high marks from manager Black for Yonder Alonso's defensive work. And a couple of very nice plays, including the play he made up the right field line with his back to home plate to make a tough play look easy. Well, Buddy's always said, you know, experience is the best teacher. And it's not like Yonder Alonso puts on the uniform and the glove and just goes out there for the game. He is out there before batting practice taking fungos off the bat. And he'll actually have players or coaches throw purposely in the dirt over at first base, practicing the scoop and the pick so he can get ready for the game. Two strikes on leadoff hitter D. Gordon here in the fourth. He walked the first time. Mark Sweeney joins us down. On the field level as Gordon takes strike three and that's five punch outs for Tyson Ross. Well as this game goes on and the Dodgers scoring three in the top of the first. You know Dick I know we, we mentioned the two seamer. I, I tell you what Mark Sweeney that that two seamer might be the go to pitch now that Tyson Ross has found a little bit of a groove. Yeah it looks like he's feeling very comfortable. I think that was a great point that you made Mark and that two seamer being very aggressive with your fastball to set up that slider but you can't rely on that. You've got to go to something that's going to be working. He looks like he has good movement on that on that fastball. Aaron lifts one to right field Venable there. For the second out and Mark and Dick we're going to take a look at that last pitch to D Gordon for the strikeout just to give you an indication of the movement on this. Look at Nick Hundley's glove up on top of that two seamer look at it. he his backside is going to the Padre dugout and the ball's coming over the inside part of the plate. That is a big leak two seamer right there. Hey, combination of the slider that's wicked and that two seamer you can see why there's high raves and high praise. For Tyson Ross, he just got off to a rocky start tonight. Yeah, and the shame is, guys, that uh, I think Tyson is going to get bitten by the uh, the pitch count bug. That was 75 right there for Tyson. Well, Bud Black will try to get him five innings and hope that the Padres in the fourth and fifth might be able to get some runs for him. Something they did not do very often for Tyson last year. He was uh, he could have filed for ill support. Mm -hmm. Hey Mark Sweeney, who was the best pitcher you faced with that two seamer comeback on the inside part of the plate as a left-handed hitter? Uh, that's an easy answer. I know Craig you're Maddox. Going. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 actually, it was one of the toughest pitches to to face because you did you jackknifed as a left-hander. You could throw it right at your your front hip, and you get out of the way. But he could manipulate the baseball, and it wasn't velocity. I think that was the most important thing. He understood how to handle those different movements with the baseball. Craig Maddox. That's yeah. strike three called and finally Ross with an easy inning one two three and now six strikeouts in the game. Proper there's that two seamer right down the heart of the plate.
We move to the bottom of the fourth inning and a reminder this season Saturday baseball comes to America's new sports network Fox Sports One and it all starts this Saturday the new home for Saturday baseball Fox Sports One you'll find Fox Sports One on the channels listed on your screen or go to Fox Sports One dot com to find your provider. All starts on Saturday as the Padres try to get something going here in the fourth. As Dan Heron has not allowed a base runner, he struck out two. Cabrera grounded to short the first time. Heron, through his 12 year career, excellent control, rarely walks more than a couple men a game. If that, there's a strike. Yet the Padres, the starting lineup tonight, the starting eight, have a lifetime average combined of 296 against Heron, but nothing so far. Not a single hit. There's the first hit of the game for the Padres as Cabrera grounds one to the center fielder. And he stayed on that curveball nicely. You know, we hear Mark Sweeney talk about letting the ball travel. A lot of times, hitters will see the curveball off speed. Their body will drift a little bit, and they'll start their swing out front in a weak ground ball. He lets this ball travel. You know, on contact, it's a, almost at that front knee. Mark, is that what you saw from your perspective? Yeah, and I like that. And, and it, that terminology is trying to let it get deeper because they ha were exposed yesterday. Zach Greinke threw a lot of breaking balls. He's going to go on that same plan Dan Heron is. And you saw a nice adjustment by Everett Cabrera. Seth Smith. Ooh, good cut. On contact right there, the front knee. And, you know, a lot of times, Mark Sweeney, you know, they'll get the curveball out here to where they're starting their swing a little bit too early and then they kind of roll it over, right? Yeah, and that tends to be swings and misses or not so foul balls down the first baseline. But, yes, you are exactly right. Let that ball travel, get into that, that strong position. J.P. Howell last night when Cabrera singled. Cabrera had him tied up in knots. Worried about a steal. He was dancing off first base. And in the meantime, Smith earned an easy walk. So the Padres at the time trailing by only a run had two men on and only one out. But Headley grounded into a double play. But Cabrera did his work just as a threat there at first base. And Heron has to back off the rubber. Well, ideal situation as a hitter for Seth Smith. You can power a baseball if some you can drive, but if he gets that breaking ball, he can hook it in between first and second base. Two balls and a strike. Smith with the only pottery home runs thus far in this first week of the season. Back to back, can he make it three, four, three? Tyson Ross hopes so. There's a kid, Tyson Ross, who's made an adjustment going to that two seam fastball, finding some success. After struggling in that first inning, Cabrera has not stolen the base thus far. Again, three and one. So Heron, for the first time, pitching from the stretch, had the luxury of working the windup through three innings with the Padres unable to get a man aboard. A different story now with the dangerous base runner Cabrera there at first, and Smith now has the count in his favor, three and one. Cut fastball as well. In on the hands, tough for any left handed hitter. And uh, Mark Sweeney, I ask you, was Dan Heron good hitting? No, it was very difficult for me because he had that hard cutter, but a lot more velocity, probably three or four more miles an hour, which made a huge difference with the different pitches because he had that split finger to put you away with. You know, you make a good point there, Mark. With, with the velocity down a few ticks for Heron. He's not going to be as aggressive with that fastball around the plate. He's going to probably try to nitpick on the edges, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I think he's going to try to change his, just give that view to the hitters. And I think it's important to throw the fastball. 
Catcher's interference is the call by plate umpire Jim Reynolds. We had an incident last night involving Carl Crawford and Yasmani Grandal where it was not called. Cabrera had second base stolen. That was a 3 2 pitch. And we found out calling New York that this is not a reviewable. You cannot challenge the call. A.J. Ellis, does it hit his glove, the swing of Seth Smith? Hard to tell. Huh? It's hard to tell there. Was that a foul tip or did he miss it completely? What, were you able to get a good view of that, Mark? Yeah, it didn't, it didn't look like it, but the, an awkward swing by Seth Smith tried to foul that ball off, but it looked like it, it came very close. You couldn't even see from the video. Well, that's an error charge to the catcher. And the Padres will bring the tying run to the plate. A single Cabrera and Smith safe on the catcher's interference. Oh, one swing and a new ball game. Chase Headley the batter. Popped to short his first time. Headley looking for his first hit of the season. 0 for 9. You know, Mark and Dick, I haven't seen A.J. Ellis box too many balls like that. That was almost in the heel of the glove, not caught cleanly. Maybe that's what fooled the umpire. Left center field, a long run for Ethier, but he's there. Tagging Cabrera, and he will advance to third with one out. Well, he we talked about it in great length as far as challenge rules. Well, these are a list of the plays ineligible, ineligible for a video review. Balls and strikes, fair foul, trap plays in the infield, tag up on the fly ball, judgment portion of the neighborhood play, and umpire judgments, including interference, obstruction, check swings box, and the infield fly rule. It's always good to know, always good to double check on the new rule. Yeah, yeah, that can be adjusted as the season progresses. I would think that catcher's interference might be one of those that they could review. Nevertheless, the Padres have a man at third with one out, a chance to get on the board here with Yonder Alonso the batter. Alonso fly to center his first time. That would get a run home. One for nine on the season. This is one of the keys of the game that I mentioned. Big hit, right? Getting a big hit offensively. Well, in this series, and this sounds like a unfortunately a familiar refrain from last year. Runners in scoring position. The Padres have failed on one occasion tonight, so they're one for 15 in the series. They were 0 for 6 last night. One for eight on the opening game. Was the big hit by DeNorfi of the two run single at one at three one. I'd like to see Yadda split a gap here. Drive to right field, that's a base hit. In comes Cabrera on his way to third. Seth Smith and the Padres now trail three to one. Alonso delivers his first RBI of the season. Well, that's a start for the Padres. And I'm going to leave the hit to the hitting expert, Mark Sweeney. Mark, what do you see on that Yonder Alonso swing? Well, you see the process that y y on your Yonder Alonso takes. He looks for an elevated pitch using the big part of the field, and that's an RBI situation and coming through big time. And that's what he needs to do. We all know that. RBI situation, come through big time, and the Padres get on the board. Chad Jerko then. Runners at first and third, one out. Takes a strike. Jerko. Struck out swinging his first time. Last couple of pitches from Heron up a little bit, even though he was taken there. Cut fastball up. That's a pitch that Jed Jerko could have crushed the opposite away. And an excuse me foul, and he's in the hole two strikes. Yeah, guys down here near the dugout. The first time I've seen Jed Jerko up close, and you can see that front shoulder leaking out just a little bit. You got to keep that close and trust your hands. Yeah, Jed is 0 for 7. On the season and has struck out five times. Big chance to deliver a key blow here in the fourth. It's 3 1 Dodgers. And he strikes out again. Third strikeout for Heron. Five, 
Well, he went back to the breaking ball, and Mark Sweeney, you just made the point, and it's evident right there. We saw the front shoulder, Jed Jerko, opening up, and then by that time, it was just all arms, kind of like the sweeper, the sweeping of the bat, not catching up to that breaky ball away for the strikeout. And our Saquon Dacation strikeout statistic, Aaron, look at those, 1,736 career strikeouts. One, uh, 129 games. It's up to Will Venable, first and third, two outs. Venable struck out swinging first time. Rips that one, foul. Well, there was high hope when Gonzalez leaped as if he had a play on it, but it had so much hook on it that it landed well foul. Alonzo back to first, Smith to third. Old ladies down that right field side, they they just they're nice. perfect. Their fielding percentage, 1,000. Yeah. No, no. The appeal, no. We've got the appeal, so the count is one and two. Yeah, it's uh, it's the prerogative of the home plate umpire to ask for an appeal or not. I mean, they could ask, but he could say, no, I saw it, and I'm sticking with my decision. He checked it. Yeah. Runner goes. And the steal of second for the new yonder Alonzo. It sheds 20 pounds, and he is a running demon here early this season. <laughs> The flash look, the pop up slide, you gotta love it. How about a two out knock right here? How about a fresca? Well, he moves into scoring position. Base hit can tie it here from Venable to count two and two. Once again, you can tell by the uh, Southland technology Fox tracks. Look at Heron trying to stay on the edges, not giving the powder hitters anything towards the center of the plate. And we saw Ethier serve one to left field, but left handed hitter. Probably going over the signs, the sequence of signs with the runner now on second base. Dan Heron and A.J. Ellis. Once again, one of the keys of the game, a big hit. Padres need it right here. Smith at third, tying run Alonzo at second. And Good the take. count now full. Good take. Alexi Amarista is on deck. Now, if I was a bet man, first base open, Mark Sweeney, Dick Enberg, maybe you're... Opinion on here. I'm not looking for a fastball here with, with the way Heron's throwing something off speed possibly Yeah, you got to stay with a big part of the field, but you can shift the field with, as a hitter as well Will Venable can look to that left center to try to stay on that off speed pitch as well Ball four no I'm late. Oh goodness Jim Reynolds took a couple of seconds before he punched out Venable that was a is this game on delay? Look how long it is before Reynolds punches him out. It's looked low. Wow. 3 1 after 4.
Diego, we go from the lowest part of the field to maybe the highest view here at Petco Park. Once again, joined with Steve Zip, the Senior Vice President of Sales and Service here at the rail at the Western Metals Supply. Tell everyone about the experience that they can get up here. So this is our version of the Green Monster here at Petco Park. We wanted to take the icon most iconic and charming part of our park and make it really the most fun part of our park. So we created really two new creative assets up here, which are seating areas, which are the rail, which is a really cool seating experience right on the rail, upgraded rail concept, and the foul pole suite, which we're standing in, which will be done very soon, which will be a really cool tribute suite directly to, uh, to attributed to our foul pole. This is what I love. You can actually rent this part out, bring some friends up here, and really have an incredible view right over the rail. Oh, you've got an amazing view of the ballpark. You've got a great view of left field, and you've got really the coolest space in the entire building that you can take a group of 12 to or take out more than 30 seats and all for your friends. We're going to get some firsthand knowledge here. I have two fans that are sitting here watching it from the rail. What's the best part of the view up here? Oh, it's great looking down on everybody. You got an entire view of the whole field, the whole stadium, and you can see everything going on at all times. Thanks, guys. They got some nachos, some brewskis. Mark, what do you prefer, chicken or steak? Uh, both. <laughs> what a foolish question. Come on, Chris. <laughs> you, know, you know he'll take anything you bring. Oh, great view up there. Thank you very much for that report, Chris. A great way for the fans, uh, like that gentleman said, to watch a big league ball game and enjoy yourself. From a bird's eye view. 3 1 to Puig and a soft fly ball on the infield to the outfield grass is Jerko. First out here in the fifth. That'll bring up Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez with a key blow back in the first inning. If you're just joining us, Carl Crawford led off the game with a double to left center. Puig was safe. He tried to bunt his way on, and a throw by Ross pulled Alonzo off the bag. So first and third. And Ramirez grounded a double pass Tedley into the left field corner, scoring both Crawford and Puig. And then later, Adrian Gonzalez knocked a single up the middle, and uh, Ramirez scored for the 3 nothing lead. Padres have gotten one run back. And we're now in the top of the fifth one away. You know, Mark and Dick, I was fooled. I have to admit, you know what? I was wrong. Parent fooled everybody with that fastball. I was guessing off speed with first base open, right? Right. He tried, he snuck the fastball by him, got the call. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I was actually I was actually surprised too, but I thought that ball was down. I thought Will Venable was right in that situation, but probably too close to take. Yeah, you're exactly right. So in the series, the Dodger pitching so good with runners in scoring position. Two for 18 that is the Padre record runners in scoring position. Here is that last pitch. Framed by AJ Ellis and from the side view. Oh, it looked like below the knees there, huh? Yeah, and you could see that AJ Ellis and credit him doing the little windshield wipers and bringing that up <laughs> into the strike zone. I like that. You're Reynolds the best, certainly uh, had a time to digest uh, his decision yeah. before he let us know there was strike three. Two and two, the count. Oof. So Ross, after the three run first inning, has settled down, although he did walk the bases loaded in the second escape there. Has struck out six Dodgers. Hasn't walked uh, anyone since that bases loaded situation in the second. Tim Stauffer now loosening up in the Padre pen. Inside, ball four. Spoke too soon. The fourth walk of the game. And the pitch count one shy of 90. Adrian Gonzalez, the pride and joy of Chula Vista. East Lake High School. Shift on, but uh, Gonzalez was able to find the hole in that infield the last time up and drove in a run. Not the last time, but the first time he batted. Well, you saw Buddy Black as we take a look at the shift there for the, the Padres against Gonzalez. Three on each side. And you know what? Buddy was up, you know, action in the bullpen. Runner goes. And no throw as uh, Hundley dropped the ball.
There's the shift earlier in the game, and Adrian Gonzalez beat the Padres because you can see he goes to the shortstop side of second base when the shortstop Cabrera was playing on the second baseman side for the base knock up the middle. So now Headley, who was playing in the shortstop position prior to the stolen base, has moved back closer to third. So it's the same situation that Gonzalez faced and uh, beat in the first inning for the RBI single. With Cabrera a couple of steps on the second base side and Headley a more normal position at third. So that shortstop hole is wide open again. Three stolen bases for the Dodgers tonight. Off speed. Nice change up. There's that change up we were talking about earlier. Tyson Ross threw a lot of change ups in spring training to get the feel for it. Arm speed like a fastball, but watch the action of this pitch. Off the table, Adrian Gonzalez way out in front. And Mark Sweeney is a left handed hitter against a right handed pitcher. Very tough to hit a good changeup. Yeah, probably the toughest pitch to hit, especially with that arm speed like you talked about, Mark. Comes back with another back to back changeups. You know, guys, you see veteran hitters and Adrian Gonzalez, we've already know what he does, but that adjustment, just slowing down and seeing that pitch out of his hands, some of the adjustments you see from those primetime players. Ramirez with his first stolen base of the season at second. And the ground ball to Alonso at first. He'll take it to the bag himself for the second out. Ramirez moves to third. That'll bring up Andre Ethier. One would guess that this is the last inning for Ross. He'd like to get yeah. out of it with no more run scoring. His uh, position in the batting order comes up third in the bottom of the fifth, so Red Black undoubtedly will go to a pinch hitter. Ethier struck out and single. Him on right here. No? We're not giving much to hit. With the right handed batter Uribe next. Let's see if they do pitch to Ethier. Ooh, almost you know, threw that one away. Interesting. I saw Nick set up down and away, and Tyson really missed big time. Down and in. That was very close to throwing one to the screen and another run. And the reason why I said that is because I saw Bud Black when he did that shot. He said something, he motioned something to Nick Hunley before the first pitch. Now maybe he wants to pitch him away, keep him away if he walks him. Then it'll probably go to Stoffer, who's hot in the bullpen, right? It's a good adjustment by Hundley to backhand yes. that pitch low and inside. I can't see Tyson Ross doing much of trying to just pepper away here to Ethier. Line drive by Jerko, and the Dodgers get another run as Ethier delivers. Ramirez with a walk and a steal, and the ground out comes home on the single by Ethier, his third RBI of the season. Four to one, Los Angeles. But Jed had a chance to catch this liner, but remember, a left-handed hitter, that ball's going to hook when you're out in front of it like that. Ball was hit pretty hard. That's a hook to it, and the Dodgers add on. Steal a run in the inning as Ramirez is able to walk and steal second to get himself in scoring position. Ethier driving in his third run of the year, and Oribe now is fouled out and struck out. Excuse me, is grounded into a double play and fouled out. 98th pitch from Tyson Ross. Dan Heron with a smile, got another run to work with, four to one. Jammed again. That's the second time a rebase gotten jammed. He's got to check his knuckles. Every at bat, all three times up, he's had one. It has uh, been right off his fist. Oh my goodness, that's down below the label. 
Those on a cool night don't feel very good. Ross does not hold on runners. Well, it's, it's got a big motion out of the stretch, and it's uh, proven costly tonight. There have been three Dodger steals. That's why, as a pitcher, you have to try to throw darts over to first base, not have a big arm swing like you're throwing the ball towards the plate. Got to be short, quick action, like a quarterback to the ear over to first base if you're going to make that move. Struck him out. So seven strikeouts for Ross, but a walk, a steal, and a single, and the Dodgers add to their lead. Now for the Southwest Airlines military spotlight. Green flag uh, proudly waving off the foul pole here at Petco Park. Just a reminder that on our Sundays, military Sundays, we are able to entertain our young men and women serving here in the San Diego area. Dan Heron now with a 4 1 advantage as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Amarista Hundley. And the pitcher spot scheduled. Drive to center. Ethier read it perfectly off the bat and a line drive out for Amarista. Brings up Nick Hundley. Looks like Xavier Nady is out of the dugout with the bat and will pinch hit for runs. Hundley fly to left his first time. Ross, that's a busy uh, line for him. Five innings, four runs, three earned, five hits, four walks, seven strikeouts, 100 pitches. Well, he found the two seamer later after struggling in that first inning. Just didn't have the feel for the slider, it looked like. Yeah, you know what? It, you look at the line right now, what it is, but the bottom line is he made an adjustment. Fair ball, line past third baseman Oribe into the corner. Digging it out is Crawford and finally gets it in. Huntley with a one out double. He screams one past Oribe. That's the first double of the season for the Padres. There's a mistake. Looked like a, a split figure fastball away, and Nick gets extended, keeps it in between Uribe and the line. 
Potter's got some catching up to do with one out. That's a good way to try to at least get one. Nady making the squad with an outstanding spring. And of course, uh, a right handed bat needed with Carlos Clinton on the disabled list. Did not make it to the big leagues last year, but you know, he's flirting with the dream even at his age, and he hit nearly 300 in triple A ball. Chris Button, what do you have for us? You talk about him spending last year in AAA, and I talked to him about what it means at 35 years old to make the opening day roster. It means so much more now than when you're 20 years old. He said at that time, you feel like you're going to make it the next 10 to 15 years. He said, I just felt like I had something left in the take, and I wanted to come home. Falls behind two strikes. Nice little career right there for X-80. 270 average, over 100 home runs. His second at bat in the series. And three pitches, three strikes. Five punch outs now for Dan Heron. Looks like a good old fashioned fastball. As you take a look out of the hand from Heron, yes, up and away, a little tail action. Up above the belt buckle, below the logo on the chest, and swung on and missed. Made short work of X-80. Everett Cabrera scored the only Padre run back in the fourth. He let off with a single, came around on an error, catcher's interference, and Yonder Alonso's RBI single. <laughs> Cabrera not pleased with that call. Hundley at second, two gone. Same spot. Yep. Two seam fastball tailing in. Mark Sweeney, you know what? Heron is getting the ball up, it seems like, lately, but yeah. up a little bit, but still trying to stay out of the heart of the plate. Yeah, it looks like he's he's doing that on purpose in this inning too, Mark and Mark, uh, understanding that he can use that inside edge. Try to go away in this one. Wow. Three pitches all taken by Cabrera, but just painting the corners. Dan Heron, that was a pitcher's, a veteran pitcher's strikeout. Grays trail four to one, two runs, and then three more, three for the first inning as Heinley Ramirez double scored two, and Adrian Gonzalez knocked in Ramirez with a single to beat the shift. 
three nothing after one against Tyson Ross. Yonder Alonso got the Padres on the board, driving home Cabrera who had singled, and then Andre Ethier in the fifth inning brought home Ramirez with that single to right field, four to one. And we have a pitching change as we go to the top of the sixth inning, brought to you by Drew Ford. Tim Stauffer comes in. Well, Tim Stauffer pitched yesterday, one inning, one hit. Zeros the rest of the way, and you know, too early right now. There's still a lot of baseball left, but too early as far as for matchups. So, Tim Stoffer trying to eat up an inning or two before you start thinking matchups. Because remember, the Padres only have one lefty in the bullpen that's Torres. Dodgers have three lefties Paul Mahalam, Paco Rodriguez, JP Howell. Technically, the Padres have a second lefty, but he's more for. Long relief, Robbie Erlin. It would be a, an emergency situation, you would think, if Black used Erlin. Right. AJ Ellis has struck out both at bats against Tyson Ross, so he's glad to see him out of the game. Ellis, Gordon, and Heron scheduled here in the sixth. Tim pitch against AJ Ellis on uh, Tuesday night. He had him fly out to right field. Hit well to right field. That's going to chase both outfielders back, and Venable at the wall makes the catch and pays the price as he slams into that scoreboard. Ellis denied. As he said, Venable on a dead run, and Will makes an excellent play. That is a huge play. It's the Bill Howe play of the game. And Jerry Coleman would hang a star on that one. It's huge because now the Dodgers won out. If that ball's not caught, runner in scoring position trying to add on. Grass under his feet, warning track, and then that fence has a little oh. bit of give. And for him to hang on to the ball because yeah. the glove went right into the wall as well as the body and the forearm. That could have well jolted the ball free. Terrific concentration and squeeze from Will Venable. One away. D. Gordon has walked, stole the base, and struck out. Aaron's in the on deck circle. Apparently, he's got more in the tank. You know, guys, you go back to that play by Will Venable, changing positions from center field to right field, different angles, knowing what the track, how many steps you get there. So impressive that they can move around and, and play defensively mm -hmm. at that level. Will playing center field last night. Mark, you mentioned it. Outfielders know their territory. One, two, three, four, and a little choppy step at the end before hitting the wall. That's great concentration because you know that wall's creeping up on you. Yeah. Sometimes it gets there faster than yeah. you had uh, calculated. Good play. Maybe that'll spur the Padres here. As down swinging is Gordon. As Stauffer has his first strikeout tonight. And communication with the Padre bullpen. Darren Heron has struck out and fly to right. And he chops this one to Alonso wide of the bag. 3 1 on the put out. 1 2 3 the inning for Tim Stauffer. But the outstanding defensive play of the game tonight, authored by Will Venable, defying the wall and denying a double.
Richard for his outstanding control throughout his career. Hasn't walked a man. He struck out six tonight, allowing the Padres only three hits. And the Padres won for six with runners in scoring position. Heron coming up with the right stuff in the big moments, denying the Padres a chance to come back. It's a 4-1 game. One thing is evident, Dick. Heron has stayed on the corners, up and down on the corners. Very few pitches over the heart of the plate for the veteran right-hander. That was evidence to the last man he faced, to Cabrera, the last time up. Handing all the corners up and down. And the plate is bigger than it appears as a fan. If the ball is barely touching the corners, you've got another whole ball diameter on each side of the plate. And he's using that completely tonight. 2-0, and oh, though, he falls behind Seth Smith. Who has flight out and safe on the catcher's interference? Huntley and Alonso conversation there. How to figure out Aaron? Yeah, trying to share notes there. Way out in front is Smith. And see, there's another pitch. And Mark Sweeney, that's a tough pitch to keep fair. But once again, Heron with the cut fastball in on the hands of the left-handed hitter. Yeah, they give the appearance that it's going to be on that corner, and it cuts just in, and you you fire a little bit quickly, like Seth Smith did on that one. It's got to be frustrating, man. Drive into the right field corner. That's hooking foul. About 10 feet foul. Down at the Petco porch. Down by the label. Broke that bat. And once again, another pitch that's tough to keep fair. Now so many times, Mark, you'll see on cutters that you'll fire your hands where you think that fastball is going to be. You'll see that late cut, yep. and you'll try to make an adjustment with your swing. That's why you'll see a lot of broken bats on the cutter. Now, you faced Mariano Rivera, right? Yeah, not fun. <laughs> One of the best cutters in the game, if not the best. Once again, look at that pitch away. Those two pitches in on Seth Smith and then away pitch number five. Yeah, your point well taken Fox track shows nothing in the heart of the nope. plate. Nothing near the sweet spot. Smith trying to get something started here in the bottom of the sixth inning. 4-1 Dodgers. Three runs scored by L.A. in the first inning. And Smith has worked the count full. It's almost a moral victory to get a 3 2 count against Heron. No walks, six strikeouts. Only three hits. Ground ball, the shift's on, playing shallow and right is second baseman Gordon. One away. It's time again to remind you to tweet your photo using hashtag Padres fan photo for a chance to have it shown on one of our telecasts brought to you by AT&T. We'll begin showing those photos next week. Chase Headley trying to break out of an 0 for 10 start of the season. He has popped up and flied out. One hopper by the third baseman Uribe who was flying halfway between second and third as the shift was on for Headley and Chase Headley has his first base knock of the season. Handcuffed Uribe. We have a short hop to the right. Didn't have time to get in front of that one. But that's in the, a perfect example of Mark Sweeney of a ball being hit exactly where it was pitched. Once we said Heron away to the lefties. Well, he did just that. Took it that way. If he tried to pull that pitch, good luck. Yeah, Chase did a nice job just using his hand, trying to simplify his approach and go the other way with that pitch. Nice job by Chase. Andrew Alonso fly to center and knocked in the Padre run with a line single to right center. Also stole a base. Oh. Right off 
that front foot. Well, that's what the cutter will do. Cut fastball. Oh, off the right shin looked like. Yeah, guys, a lot of that, as you can see, that that replay, you'll throw your hands and you'll get outside the baseball and try to make that adjustment swing and a foul right onto your foot. That is very tough, especially that cutter. You try to stay inside it, but usually you're going after that location with the first appearance of that fastball. You never did that, did you? Mike? Oh, I did it a lot. <laughs> I didn't want to wear a shin pad because you know, when you wear shin pads, you, you're telling the pitcher. Hey, like I've done that before, so be careful of that pitch inside. Well, it looks like uh, Yonder Alonso is uh, feeling around his knee area, just just below the knee on his right knee on the inside part. Paul Navarro, the assistant trainer to Todd Hutchinson, out there to make sure Yonder's okay. He says, "I'm ready to go." You know what that feels like, Mark Sweeney, don't you? Yeah, it's not a good feeling. No, going out to your garage. Yeah. Go to your dad's toolbox. Toolbox. You get a hammer. Hammer. And you just right under the shin. Right oh, on the oh, shin. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not encouraging that, but that's what it feels like. I can just hear mom and dad there back in. Julia yeah. says, "Where's Mark? He went out the garage. He's going into that toolbox of yours, there, Dad. I, not feeling good. And you know what? As a pitcher, I'm going right back in there. Don't you think, right? Don't you think a hitter, Mark? I mean, if a hitter does just that, he's going to be a little reluctant, or maybe take a bad hack at another pitch going right back in there after following it off. Yeah, you're still trying to get feeling back in that leg, you know, somehow. But yes, I, it, you you expect that and it exposes the outside as well. Soft fly ball down the third baseline, and AJ Ellis makes the catch. Oh, he got jammed there again, and Ellis uh, sprinting. 40 feet from behind the plate to make that catch. Good play. Not high enough for Uribe to get camped, and that is a tough play for a catcher. Not only with all that gear on, but that ball's got that spin on it because usually when a catcher goes, you know, the ball straight up, they'll turn their back to the infield. That that's just an all-around tough play for catcher AJ Ellis. Caught in foul territory, but it had so much English on it. You wonder if he had not caught it, whether that would have kicked into fair territory. Here's Jed Jerko. He's in the first week struggle. Struck out twice tonight. Struck out once last night. Struck out twice in the opening game of the season. Over eight. One well placed swing. Send one out of here as he did with 23 home runs as a rookie. His season could do a quick about face. You know one thing, guys. I've also noticed about Dan Heron. To me, he hasn't overthrown a pitch tonight at all. You talk about a pitcher. Obviously, he's been around the block, knows his limitations. But not trying to hump it up. Everything's been the same type arm speed, same mechanics. I don't know. What do you, what do you see? Yeah, I, I think the same way. It looks like very comfortable. He settled into his game plan with AJ Ellis, and they look very comfortable together. But yes, even when he gets behind and counts, yeah. he looks very comfortable coming back and throwing his pitch. Because yeah, there are a lot of pitchers out there, guys, where they're trying to, you know, hump it up a little bit more, and they. You know they get out of their mechanics and you know drop the arm angle and it just goes haywire. Not Heron. Wonder how far he'll go tonight. He's thrown 92 pitches. Headley with two ounces at first base. The Padres are down by three here in the last of the sixth. That's going to be a souvenir in the upper tier. You know, Mark, when you watch Jet Jerko as a pitcher, you look it almost as a position that you don't have to throw a strike. Yeah. He's getting out of the strike zone a lot of times, getting into those two strike counts. Happens a lot when you're in a funk like Jet Jerko. And, and you, yeah, that's a good point, Mark. And you mentioned earlier about the front side, and as a pitcher, you see that. 
You know who moved his front shoulder a lot when the pitch was coming to the plate? Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg. He had that little twitch where he opened up that front side. If you could pepper down and away. Ground ball pulled to Uribe. The long throw across. And Gonzalez able to dig that out. Inning over. We've completed six at Petco. Dodgers lead by three. Padres baseball brought to you by your San Diego Lexus dealers. By the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. And by the new Bacon Insider at Jack in the Box. It's got bacon mixed right into the patty at participating restaurants. Top of the seventh here at Petco Park. The Dodgers lead by three. Four to one. Four runs, five hits, one error. Five left for the Dodgers. One, four, one, four. For San Diego, and to take you the rest of the way home, here's Dick Enberg. <laughs> Dick, I'm not going home. <laughs> Top of the seven. Was that kind of like the double D turning it over to you to finish the game with the halos? Yeah, I mean, I'm not putting myself in the same category no. by any stretch of the imagination. But in those days, uh, you know, I'd do six and he'd do three. Yeah. You know, you've got the better contract here. You just get, you do your ad libs. <laughs> Dave Niehaus would be our swing man oh, going yeah. between radio and TV. Crawford. His double got things started tonight for the Dodgers and uh, they went on to score the three runs in the first inning and. That's a difference as it was the two run first inning last night on Puig's home run. Making it tough uh, with their pitching for the Padres to catch up. Evidence of that, the Padres are 2 for 20 in the three game series with runners in scoring position. Follow back. Well, Padres uh, get the bags packed and head off to South Florida tomorrow. Games Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Marlins. A swing and a miss. and. Crawford has struck out for the second time. That's two strikeouts for Stauffer. Well, as Yasiel Puig comes up to the plate, we go back to yesterday. The home run from Ian Kennedy up and in. He gets his hands in, and look at where he hits it on the sweet spot. And now on the right side, the single off of Nick Vincent. Get into that baseball, the inside part of the plate. You know, hitters make adjustments all the time. It seems like last year a lot of pitchers tried to pitch him in, swing and miss, pop him up, whatever. Well, he's going to have to make an adjustment. He made an adjustment yesterday, getting on base with two good swings, fighting off good pitches. Up the middle, and there's Jerko. 4 3 on the putout, and Quig makes everything interesting with his speed. Even a routine out, he's hustling up the line. You know what's interesting, Dick, about that home run swing from Quig yesterday? Remember we talked about Yasmani Grandal having his target down and in. 
But in fact, Darren Balsley told me that is exactly where Ian Kennedy wanted to throw the pitch up and in. Yes, Seal Quig, you just got to tip your hat to the kid. See the target low? But Ian Kennedy wanted to come up and in for the swing and a miss or a take. Credit the kid. And, and, and to quote Darren Balsley, I tip my cap. End quote. Hey, that's that's going to happen. Part of the game. A good hitter is going to hit a pitcher's pitch. Ramirez, two run double, the ground out and a walk. He scored two of the four runs. Has a stolen base as well. I, I think we can't emphasize enough how valuable Tim Stoffer is to this pitching staff. He's in a situation where middle of the game innings eater, right? Yesterday I mentioned it. One inning of work. He's working back to back nights. Off day tomorrow, travel day. Give the wing a rest. But it's always nice to have that guy in the in, in the bullpen to come and eat those innings when your starter doesn't go as deep as you'd like. And he's retired all five men that he's faced. In part thanks to a great catch by Venable to Rob Ellis of extra bases. There's the view from the Jack track. Out in right field at Petco Park. It's a good seat. Mm -hmm. How about doing a game out there sometime? Yeah, that would be fun. Two and two now to Ramirez. Dodgers four runs on only five hits. Padres one run and four hits. He went around strike three and Ramirez matted himself unable to check a swing so three strikeouts for Stauffer. Padre pitching has struck out ten Dodgers tonight. Stretch half of the seventh inning. Will Benable will start it with Amarista and Hundley to follow. Padres trail four one. Fans have stretched in the in full chorus, taking you on to the ball game. We take a look now at the keys to the game, brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier at the start of the game, get an early lead. That did not happen. In fact, the Dodgers got the early lead, put up a three spot at the top of the first. Big pitch, big hit. Well, Tyson Ross, he made an adjustment actually with the two seam fastball, but early on could make the big pitch get out of that. Mess in the first inning. And then the big hit. Well, Padres limited so far to this point four hits. And the only chance they really had, because Heron was perfect the first three, was in the fourth inning when they left two runners on base and only got one run. So now 
Hand it over to the youngster, left-hander Paco Rodriguez. He worked the sixth inning last night and allowed one hit, one strikeout, no runs. And the Padre run that they did score off Dan Heron was unearned because of the catcher's interference. So Heron goes six innings, one run, unearned, four hits, no walks, six strikeouts. So you lose Clayton Kershaw, your Cy Young ace. For the start of the season, and you pick up a Dan Heron, and yep. he delivers a game like this tonight. That's got to be so encouraging for Los Angeles fans. Paco and it's that soft one hopper off the bat of Will Venable, one away. Tonight, join Judson and Costa as they they'll get you all caught up with the latest sports news and updates on Extra Sports 1360 right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Coming up tonight at 11 after SD Live. Jets to the caster. Uh, Mattingly, the slow walk to the mound. So Paco Rodriguez apparently just asked to get one out, and a pitching change will be made. The, the Dodgers do stretch out the length of games. They like that trip to the bullpen, and that's what's going to happen here after one out in the seventh. Four-one, LA leads. Presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Well, you talk about. Uh, a quick night's work. Paco Rodriguez throws one pitch. Gets Venable on the comebacker, and he's relieved by Jamie Wright, the veteran right hander, closing in on 40 years of age. Yeah, possibly the last go around for Jamie Wright. He's put together one heck of a career. This is an interesting switch here. Alexi Amarista, left handed batter. Was in the lineup, and Kristen Orfia is going to hit for Amarista, so they go right hander against right hander. Denorfia, the here on opening night Sunday, with a fine play in the outfield, a couple of hits, including a two run single that beat the Dodgers 3 1. Just off the dirt by D. Gordon. Well connected by Denorfia, but to the glove of D. Gordon. Two away. Good job trying to go with the pitch for Chris Denorfia. Just couldn't find the hole. This ball slicing off the bat of Chris Denorfia and D. Gordon there to squeeze it. This is Wright's second appearance. Of the season. His 660th. That's tied for number five among active pitchers. 
But Troy Hawkins, 943 at the start of the year, the most active of all relief pitchers. Then Kyle Farnsworth, Joe Nathan, Chad Qualls, and right now tied with Affel, Jeremy Affel. So gets it up there well over 90 miles an yeah. hour. And good movement as well. And Robbie Erlin is tuning up in the Padre pen. Okay. Alex Torres uh, getting loose as well. Line drive and Huntley has his second hit of the night and could be a second double. Fast fielding by Crawford gets it back in. In a one run game, Huntley might have tried to go for two, but there's uh, no percentage in that in this situation down four to one. Well, we talked about the movement on the two seam from Jamie Wright. He goes to the slider this one, and it's a hanger, and that's a mistake. Nick Huntley capitalizing on that. That's exactly what the Padres need here a little late life. Tommy Medica is going to hit for Tim Stauffer. For doing an excellent job. Two innings. Retired all six men that he faced. Three of them on strikeouts. Dudley, a two out single. And Denorfield lined out facing right, and Hundley with a line single. Medica hoping he can get a hold of one. Make this a one run game. Padres have uh, equaled the hit total. Each side with five base hits. All the damage done in the first inning, basically, by the Dodgers. Three run first. Good cut. Good pitch up around the eyes. He wanted it down away, but the movement, and boy, that, that pitch looks like it starts at the heart of the plate and moves in there. Nearly off the plate on the inside off the inside corner. They have not announced the attendance tonight, but uh, on a cool night, a great turnout. Filed out of play. Look at that. You go into the media guide for the Dodgers and you look at Jamie Wright's oh, portfolio. Yeah. It almost takes a full page. He first came up to the big leagues in 1996 with Colorado. Signed as a professional in 1993. Wow. One ball, two strikes to Medica. Did he go? Yes, he did. And Medica is out on strikes. Well, the Padres gone in the seventh. Dodgers lead it 4 1.
experience with your boy Dan Heron, he was tough tonight. Yeah, looked very comfortable on the mound and, and threw the fastball early in the counts, but also his breaking stuff. The cutter came in big. He manipulated, stay out of the middle of the strike zone and did a nice job today. Uh, you've said it before, a guy like that can make pitches when he has to, and tonight he's able to do that. Still plenty of time left, just three runs down on the Padres. So hopefully they'll be able to pick something up for you. What we see on Padres Live, the postgame show brought to you by Cox Communications. We'll have, of course, everything that happens in tonight's ball game. We're also going to take a look around baseball, check out some of these plays that have gone into this new instant replay review rule. Some have been rather controversial. We'll have that, and you'll hear from the manager, Buddy Black. So all that and a whole lot more when we see you tonight, guys. After to the final out. All right, Mike. You don't want to miss that post game show. All the highlights, all the scores, insights into the game and around baseball with Mike and Mark. Denorfia stays in the game in right field and Venable moves to center with Amrista out. And the new pitcher is Robbie Erlin making his first appearance of the new year. There's some tough customers as well. Starts with Adrian Gonzalez and then Ethier. Ninety on his first fastball. Gonzalez, RBI single in three trips tonight. Robbie Earl on the fastball, the curveball, and he really needs to develop a good changeup. Fly ball lifted, foul territory. Third baseman Headley. One away. And while we've got a second, just as a reminder, folks, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Potters and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Andre Ethier, the only Dodger with more than one hit, he's two for three, struck out single twice. Knocked in the fourth run of the game for the Dodgers back in the fifth inning with a line single to right. A couple of good breaking pitches. Yes. Jumps in front, two strikes. Erlen just 23. Bay Area, Santa Cruz. Came over with Joe Whelan from the Rangers for Mike Adams a couple of summers ago. Now, to me, that sounds like a long time ago, doesn't it? It sounds does. like eons ago. And it was only two years ago, right? 2011. Yeah. So the three, three summers, three, yeah, from uh, this July. Dad was his high school coach, Rick, in Scotts Valley. Grew up a Oakland A's fan, did Robbie Erlin. Mark Zito and Mark Mulder. A's pitchers he admired. And last year with the Padres, three and three. Very Zito. Mark Mulder and Tim Hudson were three. That was a players. staff, wasn't yeah. it? There's a happy customer. I think I could pass for Yonder Alonso's brother. Count remains two strikes on Ethier, one out here in the top of the eighth. Oh, young man there with the Padres camo cover. Has himself a nice souvenir of this night's uh, appearance at Petco. Try to sneak that fastball over the outside corner at 91. You know, the scouting report, I remember talking about uh, the acquisition of Robbie Erlin, and the scouting report said that he has good command of the fastball on the glove side. The glove side meaning away to lefties into righties. 
There's the inside target. And that's a darn good pitch there as well. Look at Fox tracks. Pitch number seven just a little bit off the plate. And pitch number eight was right on that inside corner. The Potter is not going to need that fifth starter. So Robbie Earl and getting some work here until the Detroit series and then Colorado come or on the road rather. I know at home. I take that back. Right. Detroit Colorado series and then the Giants come in. That series there, that homestand, when the Padres will utilize that fifth starter. If they play ten uh, games in the next homestand with no breaks, struck him out. Nice, a good sequence there for him. Well, he's got the good location of the fastball and the breaking ball to boot. Goes with the breaking ball, or no? That's a fastball. Looks like. Bad look at swing from Ethier. Gets them off balance for the strikeout. So Erlen gets the two men that he's asked to face. Gonzalez and Ethier. Pitching change being made. And Don Roach jogs in from the bullpen. Diego Don Roach on the mound for the Padres. Let's get to know the right-handed pitcher. Three things you need to know about Don Roach. First up is that he has a French bulldog named Lilo after Lilo and Stitch. Secondly, his mom's family was one of the first to ever move to Las Vegas. And then I asked him, what does he like to do in his spare time? He likes to build computers. And I said, that sounds kind of hard. He goes, not really. You just buy some parts, put it together. For me, the technologically unsavvy person, that sounds pretty impressive to me. Well, that's uh, that is impressive. <laughs> Got to get an A hey, plus for that. Huh? We just found a free IT guy in Don Roach. <laughs> that's right. Any computer problems, Mr. Roach? Mm -hmm. Have at it. Did you see the pirate in disguise here tonight at the Petco? Bluebeard. Uh, uh, there he yeah. is, He's posing as a Dodger fan. <laughs> Now that's a look. Good sinker from Don Roach. Major League debut for the right hander. 24 years of age, born and raised, and still lives in Vegas. First pitch swinging, a rebate, long throw. Cabrera pulls Alonzo off the bag. Now there was a case with the Uribe running where Cabrera had time to brace and throw. Yep. Elected to do that running throw off the wrong foot and didn't get enough on the throw. You're, you're right, Dick, because we know the arm of Everett Cabrera. He could have caught that, planted the back foot, not even close at first base. And for Don Roach, it's not a shocker. First pitch, sinker, hit into the ground. Uribe out of the box. You know, he, he's not going to break any. Uh, Records with the 90 foot dash, if there is such a an event. But he smelled a base hit yes. his eighth of the season. He leads the Dodgers. AJ Ellis 
Struck out twice and then sent Venable into the right field wall to capture his drive, a bid for extra bases in the sixth. When Don Roach is out there, you're going to get uh, a lot of ground balls, and that means the infielder is going to be busy. Scored a base hit for Uribe. For Don Roach, a night to remember, the first time pitching in the big leagues. Last year at San Antonio double A ball. He was eight and twelve with a three five three ERA. Well, the key for Don in this major league debut is to not overthrow, and that's kind of tough to do. And that adrenaline's pumping. Exactly, and judging by the the pitches that he has thrown in the, this game so far, the handful of pitches, which would be the next pitch, he's thrown four. He's got pretty good movement on that sinker. Came over with Alexi Amarista from the Angels. And the trade that sent uh, the popular Ernesto Frieri up north to Anaheim. There's the curveball from Don Roach. There's a two seam fastball, occasionally, very rarely a four seam, a curveball, and a split figure fastball. That ball is going to fall in front of. Left fielder Smith not hit hard, but a soft single off the bat of Ellis. So two on, two out to D. Gordon. Hanging breaking ball, and that's a big league hitter in A.J. Ellis. He stays back on it nicely. Watch it. He wants it down and away, but clearly on impact. Inner third, belt buckle high. Could have been much more uh, dangerous on that hanging breaking ball. Well, that's how the game goes. You hit a shot to deep right field that could have been a double caught by Venable, and then you just punch a little fly ball single to the left, and it all comes out okay for A.J. Ellis. D. Gordon has struck out twice and walked tonight. Andre pitchers have had the strikeout working for him. Ross had seven, Stauffer three, Erlen one. Eleven strikeouts total by the Padre pitchers. Mike Baxter has a bat. He's in the on deck circle. The pitcher spot is due next. Another base hit. That one's between the outfielders. We'll get one run home. The rebay and holding at third. A.J. Ellis, a double by Gordon. D. Gordon considered a light hitter, good base runner. He's done a good job for the Dodgers. That's his fifth hit and 13 at bats. Yeah, D. Gordon, remember he had the RBI single last night in the fourth inning to score the third run. That really hurt the Padres and going the opposite way again. Once again, Don Roach up in the zone a little bit. Rude baptism for Don Roach. He comes in, gives up a single to deep short to Uribe, a looping single to left off the bat of Ellis, and then Gordon with that line shot over Cabrera's head for a double and a 5 1 lead. And that's one of the things as a rookie making your major debut at the big league level. You're not going to get away with a lot of mistakes. You're going to find very quickly that these big league hitters will take advantage of that. Mike Baxter. Once a Padre property. He pinch hit last night in the ninth inning and was called out on strikes. With the Mets last season. Two and oh. J.P. Howell. Saw duty last night. Ellis at third, Gordon at second. All of this with two out. Three consecutive hits on Don Roach.
MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD. Honor over 400 devices. Visit Potters.com for details. Fly ball hit to left center, and the left fielder Smith is there for the final out. But the Dodgers on three two out hits score another and lead now five to one. Petco where the Dodgers trying to take the series two out of three. We look ahead on Friday night, four o'clock, our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego. Veteran left-hander Eric Stoltz will go against the Miami Marlins. That's at four o'clock. Then Saturday also at four. Andrew Kastner and Jose Fernandez, that brilliant right-hander, young right-hander from Miami. And then Sunday at 10, it'll be Kennedy and Vivaldi, a hard throwing. Uh, Miami Marlin pitcher he gets it up there 100 miles an hour and then you look ahead after they go to Cleveland for three the Padres come home three against Detroit four with Colorado and then a three game series with the Giants so great action in the next homestand hope you're making your ticket plans. Well J.P. Howell the left hander one of the three left handers for Don Manley in the bullpen. Pitched an inning last night that was the eighth. He seemed to be rattled remember when Cabrera. Reach base safely with a single, then uh, he walked Smith. So the Padres had a chance there, trailing by just a run. But he got uh, Headley to bounce into an inning inning double play. Cabrera batting right handed for the first time tonight. Single in three trips for the Padre shortstop. Only five hits, two of those. Nick Henley, a single and a double. Cabrera, Headley, and Alonso singles. Alonso an RBI with his base hit back in the fourth. Check this swing. Well, with the way. The Cleveland Indians swung the bat in uh, the exhibition games. You know, that's the, the Marlins have good pitching, good young pitchers, and Cleveland with the, uh, the potent hitters. They can really hammer. It's going to be a challenging road trip. Meanwhile, the Dodgers are six outs away from making it 11 games. Where they've allowed uh, Buddy Black's team three runs or less. 11 in a row here at uh, Petco. 
Got the magic going here in the home environs for San Diego. And they're trying to make it uh, 10 series without losing a series uh, at Petco. And the count goes full to Cabrera. Three in the first for the Dodgers. They picked up another run on the Ethier RBI single in the fifth, and B. Gordon's double, making it five to one here in the top of the eighth. That fans working the rally cap, hoping for some base runners and some late game magic here for the Padres. Seth Smith and Chase Headley to follow in the eighth. Into right center field. That's slicing up the alley. Cut off by Twig. Cabrera gambling. Oh, he's lucky he wasn't thrown out at second. Oh, my. That would have been a disastrous play by Cabrera. When you're down by four, you can't risk being thrown out, stretching a single into a double. But he made it as the ball got away from uh, shortstop Ramirez. Always have to remember, Yasiel Puig out there. Let's check it out. One hop. On the run, still makes a pretty decent throw to hit the cutoff, man. Hanley Ramirez can't find the handle, and the Padres catch a break. And you know what? On contact, he had him. Yeah. He'd have been still out. has it. He comes up to show the ball, and it comes out of the glove. Seth Smith then steps in. He's over three tonight. Flight out to center, safe on catcher's interference, and grounded to second. Hit a couple of long foul balls the last time against Dan Harrell. To a 2 0 start, lost a one run game to Colorado. Colorado's first win tonight of the season. They're 1 and 2. 6 5 Rockies in Miami. San Francisco shut out Arizona 2 0. Arizona 1 and 4. Cabrera at second. Thankfully, with a double. Yeah. There are times to be daring and times to be uh, cautious. Conservative, yeah. yeah. That was not the case, but he's fortunate. High fly ball. He just missed that. Skies that one into the night. One away. And a, a schedule that's uh, unusual for the Padres. They won't see the Dodgers again for 79 days, not till June 20th, and it's back here. They won't go to Dodger Stadium till July. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable division opponent. I mean, that's why there's arguments for pro interleague, con interleague, uh, you know. You get 10 people in a room talking about baseball on those subjects, you're probably going to 10 different arguments. But uh, you know what? I I don't like it. Well, it's all going to be jammed up, the Padres and Dodgers, uh, July, August, September. Yeah. Chase Headley, his first hit of the season, last time up with a single to left, batting left handed. He's hitting from the right side for the first time tonight. Opportunity, a man in scoring position. Padres try to chip away that 5 1 lead, and Headley fooled badly on that breaking ball. You know, with the absence of Brian Wilson now being on the DL for the Dodgers, he was their primary eighth inning guy. We might see Don Manley go more matchups. For instance, this inning, JP Howell turning Cabrera around, lefty Seth Smith, and then turning Headley around. 
Chris Perez getting loose. So for that eighth inning to hand it over to Kenley Jansen, you might see different types of pitchers out there according to the matchups. Chad Billingsley and all season surgery. Not a part of the rotation. They hope to get him back sometime during the season. That's in there. Brian Wilson, who pitched uh, and took the loss on opening night, has been placed on the disabled list. And of course, Clayton Kershaw unable to start the season with a bad back. So some pressure in the uh, pitching department for the Dodger Blue. Significant loss when you don't have Kershaw on your rotation. Yeah, maybe longer than anticipated too, as far as his comeback is concerned. Two and two, and it's on the inside corner. With strike three. Two away. Howell gets Headley on strikes. So well, after flipping up some breaking balls up there, this looks like an off-speed pitch changeup on the inside corner. Look like J.P. Howell kind of turned around. It's definitely high enough. Mid thigh high. Chase had an argument that maybe just a little bit inside. Not too close to take. Here's John Alonso knocked in the Padre run in the fourth with a single to right center. Stole a base. He's flied out and fouled out. Need to get those hit and close. I don't know where uh, those are being stored down in that clubhouse, but in winning on Sunday night, only five hits. Last night, losing three, two, six hits. And they have six hits again tonight. Well, JP Howell really does a fine job of turning over that fastball. His fastball is going to be anywhere from 87 to 90. It's almost like got a screwball action to it. There it is there. That's at 87 miles an hour, but you see that ball come out of his hand. He really gets on top of it and inverts pronates. Were you a pronator or a supinator? Mm, both. Okay. Just like the chicken and the beef. Right. You know, when you hear of a screwball, he really Mike Marshall, remember mm -hmm. that. That's how you throw the true screwball. And you talk about only certain few guys can throw that without really getting hurt. Because imagine the torque that puts on your arm. I mean, throwing a baseball already is tremendous torque on the arm. But if you you know it's really neat when you see the super slow mo camera mm -hmm. when a when a pitcher throws a fastball, how that arm pronates naturally comes in mm -hmm. like a quarterback too when they right. throw footballs. Same exactly type deal. Right. Right. But for a screwball, you really have to. Exaggerate that motion to get that type of rotation. For instance, a lefty and a lefty to get it down and in to have that break. Most famous uh, screwball pitcher of all time, King Carl Hubble. That's right. Ground ball right side. Gordon there to close the hole and take a hit away from Alonso. Padres waste the leadoff double by Cabrera. We go to the ninth. It's 5 1 LA.
Fryer, not much to dance about tonight. The Padres trail 5 1 as we go to the ninth inning. 27,498 on a chilly night this Wednesday in San Diego, and the three game series attracting just over 108,000, and I believe that's the most ever for the opening series here at Petco Park. So, congratulations to the good fans of baseball here in San Diego supporting this. Uh, Opening series, the biggest crowd ever at Petco on opening night, 45,567, 35,000 last night, and 27,000 this evening. Don Roach into his second inning of work, top of the order, Crawford, Puig, and Ramirez. Crawford started the trouble in the first inning for the Padres with a double to lead off the ball game, and lines that one to left field. Smith over to Hold Crawford to a long single. Padres games are more fun with a group of friends or co-workers. You and your crew can enjoy big seating, special seating areas like the Jack Deck or Kona Cove. Scoreboard welcomes on-field experiences and much, much more. Bring your group of 20 or more to a Padres game at beautiful Petco Park by getting on the horn and calling 619-795-5555 or emailing group sales at Padres.com now. Yes, Hill Puigu. Did the damage last night in the first inning with a two run homer on the way to the 3 2 win. Held hitless tonight. But did reach safely on a throwing error by pitcher Tyson Ross on a bunt attempt in the first inning and came around to score. He's walked in, popped up, grounded out the second since. Well, Don Roach has been up with the breaky ball. That last hit off the bat of Carl Crawford was a hanging breaky ball. Runner goes, and the ball pounded foul by Puig. Big jump by Crawford. Dodgers with three stolen bases off Tyson Ross, the starter for San Diego. See, you see Puig shaking his head, patting his chest. He felt that Crawford, he, after all is said and done, he wishes he didn't swing at that pitch. Followed up because he saw that Crawford had the base stolen. A little communication going on there between Puig and Crawford down to first base. Ground ball sharply to third. Headley to second for one. Back to first on double play. Five, four, three. Puig, despite his speed, hit that one perfectly on one hop to Headley with the around the horn twin killing. And this ball was not hit softly. That ball is fielded by the gold lover Chase Headley. Nice feed to Jerko and Puig, who's always hustling down the line. Good play all the way around for San Diego. So two outs in the ninth, and that's where that sinker baller pays off, getting a Puig to hit into the double play. Here's Ramirez, two-run double back in the first inning. And then he scored on Gonzalez single for the 3-0 lead. Another ground ball, and Headley cuts it off in front of Cabrera. Better fortune for Roach with the ground ball in the ninth. Padres last call, Jed Jerko will lead it off.
Out of the ninth inning, time now to salute our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Veteran Dan Heron hasn't lost the good control of the 33-year-old, allowing the Padres one unearned run, only four hits, and struck out six on his way to his first win as a Dodger and his 130th career victory. Dan Heron, our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Chris Perez is the new pitcher for the Dodgers here in the ninth inning. Perez coming over from the American League Indians the last uh, five seasons. Hard throwing right hander. Had a decent spring training as well in the short time as other six and two thirds innings pitch. ERA of 2.7. He pitched on Sunday opening night here in San Diego. Opponents only hit 174 in spring training. Perez is 28. College ball at University of Miami. So he must have been a teammate of uh, Yasmani Grandal and Yonder Alonso maybe for a year. He's a, a year older than Alonso. He's pretty much a two pitch pitcher. Chris Perez. Fastball 90 to 95 and the slider. A Husky 6'4 and 230. Jerko struck out twice and grounded to third tonight. Hits that one deep to center field. That's got a chance. Ethier a long run to the warning path and makes the catch. Oh, the cold night air knocked that one down. Jerko got a lot of it. But just a long out for Jed. Well, put a good swing on it. Had a good pitch. That ball down and in, dropping the head. Had the good sound to it. But not tonight. That's a Petco Park late night long out. Will Venable has struck out twice and tapped to the mound. Good little good slider. slider huh? Yes, it is. Late break. Unless the Padres come up with a dramatic rally, been able to manage only six runs in the entire three game series. How about that? The ball found the pirate. Yeah. Lubert. Line to the oh. shortstop. Well struck, but right at Ramirez, two away. So a long out Jerko, a line shot out Venable, and the Padres down to their final chance, Kristen Orfia. Well, nothing you can do there, William. Put a good swing on it. Dodgers just happen to be playing defense in the right spot. An Adam ball. It was right at him. As Monty Grandol with a bat, hoping he gets a chance to swing. On to the final out. Here in the bottom of the ninth, a 5 1 lead for the Dodgers, who are trying to make it 11 straight games, allowing San Diego three runs or less. Tyson Ross after the struggles in the first inning and the bases loaded situation in the second came back pitched well when this one comes down the ball game will be over Gordon with the final out and the Dodgers have taken two out of three with a five to one win tonight but Black's team unable to come up with the big base hits when they did have scoring chances as they were uh, two for 24 in the three game series with runners in scoring position. Final score again. Five to one for the Dodgers. Padres live is next. Mike Pomerantz. Well, Dick, I think you're right. Runners in scoring position. It has been the struggle versus the Dodgers. Hopefully the guys will turn it around when they head to Miami to play the Marlins. We're going to preview that series when we see in a couple of moments. Plus, you're going to hear from Buddy Black. And we're going to talk about the collision rules at the plate. All that more in moments. Thank you.